We're going to call this meeting to order. This is the October meeting of the Parks and Recreation Commission. Um, we'd like to first start first order of business with the September minutes. Did everybody have a chance to look through those? Are there any questions, suggested edits? No, okay. If they look okay to everyone, if we can have a motion to approve the September minutes. I will make that motion. Thank you. Do we have a second? I can second. I wasn't here, so that's my hesitation, but I did read through them, but yeah, I'll second those. Very good. Thank you, Jeremy. Yep. Okay. <clears throat> Approval minutes are approved. Moving on to our reports, we'll start with our parks report. Guy Goldsmith. Good evening. Um, I don't know if you, any of you noticed, but the Rancho House is kind of come, it's getting closer to being complete. We're working on the punch, uh, punch item I list, and uh, the turf grass is starting to come in. We graded and seeded that, so um, we've had to do supplemental watering to get the seed to grow, so, but, you know, it's been so dry. <laughs> um, we continue to pick up uh, all the trash receptacles and uh, pet waste stations, which is just kind of a weekly task that we do. We maintain equipment as needed as month, um, prevent a maintenance stuff, um, in season stuff right now, but we're also going to start working on winter equipment here really soon. Um, ground, uh, we perform ground and landscape maintenance. Um, we continue to stay very busy with landscape maintenance and watering of uh, plants and new trees. We did um, plant a bunch of new trees last week and Saturday. Um, the DNR had a gray show grant that we applied for. We got $5,000 for that. Great. And so we planted a bunch of trees. Some of the public came out and helped us. So that was, that was great. Um, turf grass mowing has been minimal due to the dry conditions. However, much time was spent trimming of undesired weed growth in and around our parks, ponds, and grounds. Um, ball field maintenance uh, still continues just because of the fall ball season. Um, tennis court, or not tennis, uh, soccer um, lines have still been painted. Um, that program is just about over though, however, um, but that's one thing that we've done is helped out with the soccer program. Um, we did do some additional seeding um, with a slit seeder. We, um, unfortunately, it's not growing, but because of the dry weather, the dog park, we overseeded that. Um, Forever Green Road right away as you're going out to the, the interstate. Some of that didn't come in the best. Uh, and Petta Meadows Park, just to name a few. Um, continue to meet with Shive Hattery regarding the Centennial Park Loop Road. I don't know if any of you been out there to take a look at that. There's a big... It looks like a big project, but I think once all the dirt is graded and dirt hauled off, it, it will all blend in really nicely. I have to say we did we have um, or we continue to receive a, a few complaints about the residents on the south side and east side, thinking that um, you know they're worried about once that road's in place, the traffic how it's going to change the usage of the park. I agree. We're just going to have to take that and see where it goes. Um, but their, their, their main concern is, is being a loop around that it's going to be speedy around it. So we're just going to have to see and do what we can to deter any of that. So hopefully um, it'll look nicer here really soon. Like, let's say, uh, I, I believe the paving is supposed to start next week. Um, and we're still hoping to do a dormant C grading and seeding before um, or later this fall. The reason why we do want to do a dormant seed, if all possible, is to give it that extra boost in the springtime to get that grass and turf back established before blues and barbecue. Um, oh, at the tennis court, this is just some, some little stuff we've done. We've put up new LED lighting at the tennis court. Um, we assisted with Fry Fest by delivering two generators to the Corville CVB prior to the Fry Fest event. We picked everything up after the event. And let's see, tennis court, um, that project is nearing completion. So um, right now the, um, the painting, the surface has been all painted except for the lines. They need to put the lines on. That'll be um, next week. And then um, it's got to it ask here for a little bit before we can open it back up. One, one side note on that, the... It would be the west side is where we plan on putting the ice skating rink. However, 
Um, the contractor basically said it's not going to warranty the paint if we put that ice skating rink on it this season just because it's so fresh. And once you put that plastic liner down, it'll probably soften the paint. So we're going to have to find an alternative site for the ice rink this year. Um, but that, it's coming along quite well. I think everybody's going to please, be pleased with it. Six pickleball courts there now um, and two tennis, tennis courts. So anyway, the pickleball group, very, very happy with it. So they were out there. They're out there daily. He gave me a drop box of like hundreds of pictures in it. He's just been taking pictures. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. Um, and also the Parks Department assisted Paul Sleeper, the, the Iowa DNR fishery management biologist, mm -hmm. with the release of hundreds of new blue, or not blue, uh, channel catfish in all Cineone ponds on September 27th. Um, this is completed about every two years uh, just because catfish do not reproduce very well in a pond setting. So that's some of the stuff we've done over the past month. So if there's any questions, I'll be willing to answer. Very good. Any questions for Guy? Uh, the road at Centennial, is that is it going to be two-way or is it a one-way loop? No, it's two-way. It is two-way, okay. Uh, narrow two-way, but it's... That's what I, just looking at it, I, it did, yeah. I couldn't really tell. Uh, so the, it... Go ahead, sorry. The It's going to... It's going to have a rollover curb all the way around it. Got it. And our thought was, for instance, like Blues and Barbecue, when we're parking cars out there, we can take multiple different right. ways. You're into not hopping it. a big curb to get cars exactly. off into the grass. And we don't yeah. have to take the same path, yep. as, per se. So yep. we can spread out that turf wear nice. around the park. <laughs> is there thought that if speed's a concern, is there thought about like speed bumps? Or, I mean, what, what, or, or yeah. you know, what have you... Um, I mean, gonna, obviously we'll have to see, right? But. Yeah, we're going to evaluate that. I did bring that up um, because I wanted to try maybe incorporate that into the concrete mm -hmm. projects so they'd be more permanent rather than temporary. Our engineering suggest, highly suggested not. Hmm. Why so? Hmm. Interesting. I just, I, I don't, you know, he didn't really have a reason, but he just said just the, the that's what's normally, it's hmm. not a really appropriate place for speed hump. Hmm. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, it'll be interesting. I mean, there's a lot of kids right in that that you know that playground right yeah. there, yeah, so it's a concern, you know, especially if people are zooming around. So, mm -hmm. hey, we'll have to see, right, and then we'll take it right. from there. But I'm just curious if that was something you'd already talked about. Yeah, we. That's great. We, I, I did bring that up. It was early enough on where we could have added, um, on the, I guess on the south side there's mm -hmm. going to be two shelters mm -hmm. for parking. Um, we could have added one right in between or two on right before each shelter which would have been right before the crosswalks. Mm -hmm. um, but they, they oh. talked it over with management, and they, they suggested not. Okay. Interesting. So, yeah. There you go. And I think you answered this question, because I went back and tried to ca catch up for the meetings I missed. The sidewalks that are coming off of Franklin, those will be connected? Yes. Okay. Everything will be completely okay. connected in after this project Great. is done. Yes. Wonderful. Yeah. Yeah, because it goes from really nice, smooth sidewalk to <laughs> off-road terrain into the park. Yeah, yeah, so exactly. eventually... It's going to be connected yeah. really nicely. Perfect. Yes. Great. Um, Thanks. The, of course, the shelters won't be there right. until we get the post budget. But that's going to... That's coming up this November, budget sessions. That will be in there to to present. So cool. I'm hoping to get that in there. Great. Get those two shelters built. Great. Thanks for the info. Mm -hmm. Lights. Will lights be all the way around on no, the... No. No lights. On the road? There won't no. Be... No. No. In fact, that was one of the biggest, one of the, the second biggest complaint of the residents out there. They don't want lightage. Yeah. I just worry about that. kids going out there and uh, yeah. just hanging out. Right. If it's dark, mm -hmm. you know. Well, they, they're going to hang out there if it's light, too. Yeah, but. So, and the park is supposed to close at 1030. More. Or 10, I should say. Hmm. Yeah. I would assume once it's established, um, something will work with our North Liberty Police. Yeah. That may be a just a, a daily, nightly loop they make. Mm -hmm. kind of well, I'm right in that neighborhood, so I'll, I'll be watching. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's almost in my backyard, so I, I'll, be, I'll be right there. Yeah. I, I do agree it's going to change the, the yeah. characteristics of that park. Yep. But that's what that park was always designed to be since 2012. Mm -hmm. Yep. That's the destination park. Um, it's not going to be your passive park. The lady I spoke with today... Um, her real oh, you know how, how the cities go. They have this plan, but it will never come to be. And it's like, <laughs> huh? Interesting. Yeah. Well, this uh, this city follows through. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, well, yeah, that's that's true. Fortunately, you've never worked with North Liberty before. Uh -huh. Very proactive. Like, right. So. Yeah, I don't know how you would have bought a property there and not known that 
Yeah, this I mean, is it's what obvious. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is a huge part. Like, yeah. why would we not? Yeah. yeah. Well, we appreciate the work you're doing to balance, you know, having these mm -hmm. new features and, and utilizing this park fully with mm -hmm. safety and comfort for residents. It's not an easy thing to do. So, right. Thank so, you. Um, just future things that are left out there. Um, of course, the uh, performance theater with the, the, the meeting hall or gathering space mm -hmm. building, along with that, the splash pad, about a 5,000 square footage, maybe um, splash pad there. Uh, of course, three shelters, two on the south side, one uh, more on the north, but that's going to be a, probably a little bigger because it will be utilized during Blues and Barbecue. Mm -hmm. um, a gazebo near, near the pond with a possible veterans memorial right there. And then the, maybe something that's going to come in sooner than later. I'm, we're trying to get finish off our traditional playground area. So we have the like the 5 to 12 and we have the two to five at the tot lot. Mm -hmm. And then off the side of that, we, we're, we're looking at doing an, an uh, ADA style, like a swing set that an actual wheelchair can go into, and right. some different features like that off the side of that. So cool. that are, that's what we have left to, to do on that park. So Remind me, where's, where's the permanent shelter, the performance? Is that toward the south also? No. So you have the traditional playground, you have the rock climbing. Yep. That's right in the middle. Okay, got it. And the traditional playground, the splash pad, the the the, the trail that goes in between it, mm -hmm. that's going to lead right off into the splash pad area. Got it. And that trail will connect in and go to the, to the, like the amphitheater area, and that will con then eventually connect over to the rock climbing area, so it'll all be tied in. Got it. And the and the amphitheater stage will be faced which way? South. Okay, that's what I thought. Yeah. So you're using that space behind. That's yeah. The big yeah. green area. That's yeah. where people are going to gather. And cool. yes. Yeah. Cool. When <clears throat> when do you think the splash pads will go in? Well, it's going to all depend on fundraising. So we're going to tie the amphitheater and the splash pad into one project, in one fundraising project. <clears throat> so we can maybe gather, you know people from two different mm -hmm. to support it sure sure so um since we're looking at maybe having the headworks for the splash pad built into that building so we don't have to have another building there to, to support that and we're looking at out uh, restrooms on that building also that you can access from the outside not necessarily from the inside but from the outside sure. so we'll have restrooms there at the same time that the splash pad would go in okay yeah. but we do currently have a preliminary design of the whole plan um, it's just that we're just waiting to see where the funding will go is that plan available or is it appropriate to have it available to the public not yet not yet yep that makes sense yep. so you know which pieces are mm -hmm. okay what are you going to try to ask for this current next budget year <clears throat> I'm hoping to talk about this yeah okay. um, I think council their support with council to uh, mm -hmm. try moving forward but yep. we'll, we'll see where yeah. it goes of course, it's a, it's, a, it's going to be a big, it's going to be in the millions. Yeah. Oh yeah. To put sure. this up. Yeah, so. Mm -hmm. Great questions. Any other questions <clears throat> for, for Guy, or Tim? No. Okay. Thank you very you much. Welcome. Appreciate all you're doing. Thank you. Yep. No problem. Okay. Moving on to our recreation and pool report, Shelley. Uh, September's been. Uh, Busy time of year, especially for sports, and Brian over here handles all that, so he's been busy. Um, and it's also that time of year we're staffing. We're usually making a transition from our summer staff to then our year-round. And then with uh, all the other pandemic issues and stuff, that has definitely added to our additional part-time staff in all areas, swim lessons, uh, rec counselors, and also front desk. So. We're gradually getting there. We're still a little short-handed, and we're just trying to keep adding so we can go to off-sites and all that fun stuff. So, um, The pools were shut down September 10th for the pool heater replacement project, um, and that's going along just fine on schedule um, right now uh, till the end of October, and then hopefully everything will start back up that first week in November is our goal. Uh, this month has also been uh, really getting to a hold on our building maintenance issues from the snow slide 
that we had back in March. Um, we did specs and plans for the gas line replacement, um, the snow rails to keep that from happening again in the future, and also the library north gutter fascia repairs. Um, so we're working with Shive Hadry, sending out those that information, accepting uh, bids back. Uh, we did approve for the gas lines. Uh, Pipe Pros was a little bitter on that, and we're just waiting to see and set up meetings on when that will start, hopefully soon. Um, and then the snow rails, same thing. Uh, those are due back into me uh, by October 15th, and then we'll award that and hopefully get that work done. The Library North gutter, um, those bids were back to me yesterday. I only received one, so they like the, me to have more than one, <laughs> especially for the price that we're looking at. So uh, I'm trying to work with the actually uh, company that's doing the pool heater gutter fascia. Uh, I got a hold of them today and said, are you interested? And if so, please provide an estimate. And hopefully I'll at least have two. Um, otherwise, I did. I sent out five. Mm. And I don't know if it's just that range of project that's still a little too small. They have bigger things. Labor issue. I, I don't know what's yeah. causing it. Material-wise, too, um, has also been impacted. So I don't know what are all the factors, but... It, has definitely been a learning experience, um, especially for me, of learning some of the building aspects. I'm <laughs> learning a lot, so hopefully we'll get it all done and buttoned up for winter. <laughs> so. Shelly, um, what does a snow rail look like on a building? Is it like something on the eave? or It's on the roof itself and along the uh, edge, I would say, downslope edge on, on all sides. Um, we currently have it. We put it in. Um, the snow rails um, above the existing main south entry because okay. a lot of snow was falling as people were coming into oh, the building. Okay. So we did put some there initially. Um, and prior to that, uh, they called them snow gems. They were the plastic triangle oh, yeah. things. Yeah. yeah. Well, There's no they, were, gems. <laughs> they were surface mount. And what we're proposing is mounted down through the through roof the into roof. the deck. Sure, wow. sure. Lumber, lumber sturdy. Yeah. yeah. So the snow gems, well, again, through over the years, they've all been kind of wiped out. And then this They're just last... kind of come off with this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, Works out real nice. So, yeah, that... Pick them up with a snowblower. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> There's quite a few still up there, still yeah. floating around, still falling off, either rain or snow, as <laughs> that we see them. So um, hopefully we'll get those all taken care of. These rail systems, like I said, it would be on the north downslope edge where the two uh, pool building and rec building meet. There'll be one there, and that kind of actually is put on the downslope from the rec roof that goes towards the in-event unit where we did have uh, damage to that in event unit because of the snow slide as well. Um, and then down on the south edge of the down slope. So um, we're hopefully gonna rectify that problem and not have that any longer. So um, rec dust database that just shows a uh, number of people in our database. Uh, we had an increase of about 214 from last month. Um, just shows there too, uh, in the past, some of the information, what percent are residents, what percent are non-residents. So we're at the 65, 35 still. Um, aqua programs, uh, was shut down as of September 10th, uh, due to the indoor pool shutdown. Uh, but you can see we did take registration for the program starting up in November so that you see the revenue taken in, uh, for the aqua classes. Uh, swim lessons, same thing. We won't start swim lessons until November 15th, I think it is. Um, but registration took place, and so you see that revenue coming in. Are those fully booked up, the swim lessons? I believe they are. <sighs> <laughs> yes. My kid's never going to learn to swim. Um, <laughs> the October session, you know, we had that scheduled, but because of the pool heater replacement, uh, those were canceled. Um, luckily, I'm glad in hindsight um, that we 
had to cancel those because we did have a staff shortage with swim lessons too. Mm. So hopefully this extra month gave Ashley enough time to get mm -hmm. uh, swim lesson staff to have those November sessions. And that's another reason why you might see the lower numbers in the classes themselves is we're starting to hopefully work back up to our regular offerings, but we're dealing with that issue as well. Uh, league sports, like I said, been very numerous. Brian's been working on. I, I'll turn it over to him if he wants to mention anything on leagues or sports. <laughs> um, we have about three weeks of flag football, volleyball left. Haven't had any issues with COVID or anything like that, so that's been good. I really haven't received anything at all about COVID stuff or anything going on. So um, last year we had a few um, COVID stuff when it was all in the hot time, but this time we're pretty good. Uh, youth competitive uh, basketball starts this next this coming up week, um, starting on Monday, so that'll start up also. And then uh, co-ed volleyball, adult co-ed volleyball and men's basketball is going on as well right now. So, Ryan, how are you doing with officials and mm. dealing with the shortage? <laughs> yeah, it's, a, it's an interesting, yeah, because some of my regulars have actually said they don't want to do it as much, and they've been, you know, I've been here 15 years, and they've probably been doing it for 15 years. So some of them just want to be subs, and there's not a lot of young guys or gals that are trying to get into it or not calling me anyhow to get into it. So it's been, it's been, it's been tough. So that might be something that, you know, we might have issues in the future and might not be able to have a program because of, mm -hmm. because of it. So um, we've raised, you know, how much they get paid and stuff like that, and it helps for a little while, but it just seems like it doesn't matter what you pay it. There's just a shortage, and you've probably seen it in the papers of all the, mm -hmm. all the athletics and mm -hmm. referees and stuff like that. So, mm -hmm. um, it's kind of crazy, but yeah. What's the requirement? Is it just a standard re uh, requirement for ref, like state of Iowa, or is yeah, it? Yeah, nor normally all of my referees are, you know, in the associate Iowa City or Cedar Rapids Association. They're all certified. Yeah. Um, a lot of them do varsity, so the second session is kind of the one I'm worried about because everybody will be starting their varsity schedules mm -hmm. and they won't want to do as many youth things and stuff like that. So we'll see how the second second session goes of, of leagues. But yeah, I mean, flag football and stuff like that, it's like pulling teeth trying to get yeah. people to do it. And we don't pay as much for flag football, but it's not, it's not really hard. You know, it's right. first and second, third and fourth and fifth and sixth grade kids out there playing. You know, we pay them like 15 bucks, a, 15 bucks an hour, but I mean, it's, it is tough. I've reached out to the Liberty High School football coach, and he got there was a couple from there. Uh, Tiffin is involved, too, so he's got a couple. But, I mean, last week I think uh, Jordan from Coralville said they had seven, seven scheduled at noon, and two of them showed up, and he had to try to uh. figure out what to do. So it's just a, it's a battle every week, and people just, they just don't show up. They don't. Yeah, I don't know. Wow. They sign up for it and then they don't. Mm -hmm. They don't do it. <laughs> so then you got to call them and try to get somebody else to come that isn't either scheduled or right. trying to get a hold of them. So I don't know what the. Do you do you know. advertise that some more specific? Here, here's my thought. My thought. So our sport management program at the university, mm -hmm. we we did up until COVID actually had a a class. That was that was taught specifically for, for official. So we have several intramural people that also mm -hmm. Matt Schaefer refs for me. Yep, sure. Shay Shay uh, McMurray. Yep. So they always try to send me guys. I mean. Yeah. But sometimes those guys don't ever contact me. You know, right. they're in an email and my name's in it, and they don't. They still don't contact me. So. Yeah. I'm not getting many from there either, and they're right. You know, they're hiring right. those people as well and trying to just get them more time and hours and experience. Right. Yeah, it's yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, so, if it's if it's something you want to share and I, information, and I, like I can I pass said, it on to our, you know, our program and see, yeah, yeah. you know, we have sports management students that are looking for experience, mm -hmm. so always like to match those up when it's possible. Yeah. And so. we, you know, we send stuff to the Cedar Rapids, but I just don't know if they want yeah. to come down and do it. There's probably enough openings up right. there too to mm -hmm. to do it. So, yeah. Well, and jo Jordan's part of our program, former former uh, student of our program, so he, he if he's having issues then <laughs> Yeah. Then everybody, you know, it's not just it's not just you guys, right? So it's yeah, uh, and that's you know three different cities trying to right. get people that pool we know. And it's, yeah, it's hard. It's yep. it's really hard. And then yep. you know you have adults and stuff. You have one guy that can't referee, and you got one referee out there doing adult basketball, and it's 
you know. Yeah. He's doing it all alone. It's tough. So, yep. but I don't know what else to do other than not have it, you know. So, I don't well, know. Well, hopefully someone is watching this <laughs> and <laughs> is spreading yes. the word yeah. to yeah. help us North Liberty get some additional officials. Yep. And there's, I mean, junior high and everything's having issues. I mean, they're all having, I mean, they're doing, sending out things to parents like, hey, here's a 30-minute video to watch for volleyball. You know, we don't have an official, so just stand up here, blow your whistle. And so it's really, it's really strange. I don't know. It's, it's bad. But I don't know what the answer is. I mean, they keep open up in the pay and it doesn't. I mean, what do you think is causing this issue? I mean, other than the long timers kind of the long timers getting out of it, and younger people just aren't either They're getting into it or don't want to deal with you know parents complaining or you know fans or what the deal is. But well, I mean, there's there was a shortage pre-COVID. Yes. Also, this is this is pre. Yes. This has been yep. going on for a yes. long time. Yes. But I it's just emails. exacasperated now with yes. having even yeah. Yep. Yeah. I mean, I get emails from today. They were looking you know for some junior high referees. Yeah. All he wanted is a body with a whistle and two legs. That's all they care about. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's how desperate they are. You know, they have Gosh. one guy that's certified, and it's like, well, we'll take two more that aren't just to, yeah. just to have the games. So, right. mm-hmm. and there's short, you know, there's shortages in bus drivers, and yeah. there's a couple junior high games that, you know, they couldn't take them to Cedar Rapids. They didn't have a bus driver. You know, it's just crazy. But yeah. I don't know. <laughs> it's nuts. Mm-hmm. Well, we shall all advocate for. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's crazy. Additional but, involvement. Yeah. <laughs> Ryan. Shelly, do you have additional things to um, share with us? Going on, uh, the before and after school program, uh, we started that back up, and uh, the morning is still low with only about 13 participants, but the after school is up to our kind of max set of uh, 46 to 50. Uh, so Matt's doing, that's coming back around, which is good. Um, we have our land fitness classes, I guess I would call them, uh, (laughs) taking place. Um, Those aren't as popular as our aquatic exercise classes, but slowly we're trying to get those to come back around. Um, Again, some of our, most of our contract instructors, this is kind of like a part-time job for them, so maybe their schedule changed and stuff, so we're working through a few different changes there, but uh, some are going great, some are limping along, so we'll continue to promote those. Uh, Our Pee Wee Sports Program, Kyle runs those, and he did football this past month and had 29 participants. That continues to be a pretty good program, and uh, we'll have to look to see if we can add maybe more classes because there were people on the wait list. Um, We started back up Senior Connections lunches every Friday for the senior citizens. Uh, both rec and library staff are assisting with that program. Um, we've had three dates in September. Our, right now our max is set at 24, and we did hit that on the 17th. Um, right now we're going with just one room with two at, per side of the table uh, and basically having two tables for distance purposes, kind of that. It seems to be working out well. Um, again, why they when they come in and... If they're not in between eating and drinking during their social time, either before the meal or after, they do have to wear masks and stuff, but seem seems to be going good. Um, the rest of the report is just some of the information as far as uh, revenues coming in, different areas of the facility between memberships and rentals. Um, and then the... Other just general report information that I usually provide, so I'm open to any questions. I did have one just because I didn't quite catch something. So you said the pool is shut down, was shut down September 10th, and then it'll open, reopen the first week of November? Or did I miss something? Yes, that is our goal. It might even be at the end of October, but (laughs) right now, as far as scheduling classes and getting those rolling, we're going to say the first week in November. (laughs) If we're hopeful and we get the in a little bit earlier, you know, we'll open up to our memberships and stuff like that, but classes for sure are not going to start until November. Okay. And there have been no unexpected fines with the, the pool heater project. I know sometimes you get into something and you find additional things, but has it gone pretty much as planned, you said? 
Um, I think so. Yeah. It, you, <laughs> can you do that? Yeah. Uh, nothing that's, you know, just does nothing big. Nothing big. Right, yeah, yeah, nothing big. The water exchangers were the pieces of equipment that were a little on delay. Um, but again, they're doing everything else to them and then be able to just go in and hook mm. those up when they arrive. So that's the only delay that I recall as far as equipment wise. Um, we went in there and uh, we are changing some of the electrical lines that were in the pool pit and getting them out of there. Uh, we just basically had a shield box protecting them and it, that helped hinder, I guess, when we would uh, flush the filters and clean those out. We'd have to, if it got to a certain level, then we had to stop mm. and then let it catch up. So by removing those out of there, that should help with that process. We re don't have to do that. Um, repainted in the locker rooms and just trying to spruce up the entire area and hopefully have the gas lines so the hot water's back on for the lockers when we were open <laughs> so that's our yeah. goal we just hope the water heaters work when the gas <laughs> comes back on yeah, that means. Yeah. we'll keep our fingers crossed <laughs> those things might not know what to do when they <laughs> it's all that energy back uh, <laughs> don't who, jinx us <laughs> people think a pool is just you know a big structure and you just fill it with water yeah. there's so many oh, yeah. so of many the back things. end the unseen things so yes. yeah. exciting and, to have that moving along and that's one good thing we didn't have to drain the entire pool. Um, it would have taken longer if we had to drain it, refill it, re get it all balanced. So we're manually doing our balancing. And right now it looks like if they, we have to completely, when they do this switch over, uh, that time frame won't impact. Uh, we'll get it ready to be down for that long and hopefully make that smooth transition without any imbalance issues so we'll keep our fingers Great. crossed and <laughs> ashley's doing a good job with all of that so very good any other questions for shelly or brian no i just wanted to mention okay. i was really excited to see disc golf come to the parks oh, yeah. for the last three weekends yes and matt uh, messick one of our staff uh, started that program this fall and um basically taken his portable disc Whole golf <laughs> to different locations. Mm -hmm. um, actually, this next one's around the rec center, I believe. I think. Can't remember. I'm yeah, pretty we, sure. I think it's around the rec center. The, where did we see it last? Penn Meadows. This Penn next Meadows. week. Penn Meadows right Penn now. Penn Meadows now. Yeah. Penn Meadows so. now. Yeah. So yeah, I think it's gone over well. Um, yeah. I people have been coming in, getting the discs and stuff, and playing. So. I went and played all of them, and yeah. uh, awesome. I saw people out there every time. Yeah. Awesome. And it's kind of getting people to different parks, too, maybe that they didn't know that Deerfield existed. You know, they yeah. got to go out there and, and see right. what that was. So sure. kind of shows off some of the parks, too, the bigger parks that can handle a disc golf stuff. So definitely yeah. let us know what you liked about each one or sure. improvements we can make. Sure. I was definitely actually surprised Matt. to see how many, um, just like through Facebook and, and kind of the community that I belong to, Guys came in from out of town. Yep. Awesome. You know, where they're like, hey, we'll come down and check that out. And, you know, always good. Disc golfers are very loyal. Yeah. 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 And, they, and they love to see different places. You yeah. Know. Yeah. Something new. Always, yep. you know, something awesome. different. I'm happy to see something different. Yep. Always happy to bring people to town. So. That's neat. Mm -hmm. Awesome. I'll pass that along to Matt. Yeah. Great. Very good. Any other um, items that, any new business that we haven't addressed? If not, I know we can um, talk about filling the vacancy. Um, yes, we do have a vacancy on the board. Um, coming up in October at the city council meeting, they will appoint. Um, I, I have a list of four individuals that are interested in filling that spot. So I'm just going to wait until, I don't know which, it just says a meeting in October. So hopefully sooner than later, then we'll get that uh, vacancy filled and we'll have another new board member. So what, what are the requirements to become a board member or how does the appointment get chosen? Uh, there's an application form and they just submit that to city hall and then the mayor goes through them all for all the different boards mm -hmm. and the vacancies that we have and just chooses. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Oh, okay. Very good. Anything else discussed tonight? All right. Well, our next meeting is Thursday, November 4th. I can't believe I've been saying November dates. Uh, at 7 o'clock, and hopefully we can all be in person again like this. And you just need a motion to adjourn. A motion to adjourn? I'll second. Second. All right. This meeting is adjourned. Nicely done. Thanks. <laughs>